put it inside an apartment. So, <laughs> so we finished up the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Is that present? Yeah. Is he your shepherd? Yeah. Of course he is. You go back to the 22nd Psalm, is the past. Uh, Carrie, can you read verse, let's see. I got under verse one, verse three, and verse six of chapter twenty-two. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Three. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. And six. But I am a worm, and no man that reproacheth men, and despised of all of the people. So, the first verse said what? What's it say? In the first verse. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Was that past? Of course, it's past when Jesus died. But this was put in there before Jesus died. This was a prophecy of what he would say, but it was past. In the past, and then I was a worm. Um, before we get saved, you can't be much lower than being a worm. So that's the past. We talked about the 23rd Psalm for five weeks. How Jesus is our shepherd. How he leads us. He guides us. He strengthens us. And then, Joyce, read verses 3 and 4 in Psalm chapter 24. Are we going to get to stand in the house of the Lord? Are we? How long does heaven last? Wow. I said last week, and we talked about Wednesday night, that thing up there on the wall, it rules everything we do. On your wrist, it rules everything you do. It tells you what's going on. I guess it was the first time I ever got my 10,000 steps in so early. At 3 o'clock, my watch started going crazy. It gets it's fireworks and all that sort of stuff. I had 17,000 steps yesterday, climbed 23 flights, 29 flights. So in here, upstairs, up the hill, all that other stuff. Um, and we're moving around, and this is the house of the Lord. We're here. But we get to go into the house of the Lord and spend eternity. The watches and the calendars, everything rule what we do now. And those alarm clocks, you know, they go off and you don't want to hear them. Um, you set them and you tell them to shut up. Um, my wife loves the Alexa because when it goes off, alarm goes off, she just says, Alexa, stop. And then she says, Alexa, set power. Set timer for five minutes. She wants to lay there for five more minutes. You don't even have to get up. Now I'm setting a couple alarms while I'm going to be gone. So Becky has to get up. One of them on my dresser, she's going to have to get up and turn it off because she has a tendency to fall back asleep. So I'm going to have everything set up for her. Two or three alarms in the morning and stuff like that. If she likes to lay down her favorite things, lay down for two minutes. She's said that for years. Two, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. Um, that's her snooze time. But we're ruled by those clocks. But past, present, and future, John chapter 1, verse 14 says... And the Word was made flesh, and, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the, the only begotten of, of the Father. And the last part of that verse says, full of grace and truth. Now we're talking about Christmas in July, that's why I'm doing, I'm doing this, I'm not crazy. Uh, we need to be reminded all the time about the birth of Jesus Christ. Christmas in July, the Lord Jesus Christ, why did He come to be flesh? I, I'm, and I'm serious about this. I'm listening to a book right now, and I'm, I'll be spending a lot of time on the plane, so I'm going to listen to it. I'm listening to a book right now, The Power in the Names of Jesus Christ. The Power that's in the Names of Jesus. A few years ago, we did a whole series. I did a bunch of uh, names of God, about 12 of them. And I told you, Leonard sat down during that, and Leonard's a Bible scholar. He knew the Bible. He sat down. I've still got the paper. He sat down and did a study on every name of God in the Bible. I wrote it down and gave it to me. There's like two, three, two, two and a half pages. I only did 12. But there's a book that's called the, 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 the Power in the Names of Jesus Christ, and then there's another one called The Power in the Names of God. So I'm listening to this one, and, and it's talking about going into this. I've just gotten started on it. Um, but going into this, this thing of Jesus, of what he is, who he is, how he is. Um, so the first thing is, he became poor so that we could become rich. Now, we're not talking about money. This world has their own idea of what rich and poor is. How many of you grew up poor? Right? I'm serious. You grew up poor. You didn't have much. 
We were so poor we couldn't even pay attention. That's pretty poor. You know, my dad had we had we had three kids. My dad made a dollar thirty, dollar forty, dollar fifty an hour. Even back then when things were cheap, rent was sixty-five dollars a month. That's a lot when you make a dollar fifty an hour. We live poor, but everybody around us lived poor. You know, Dale has said that before. We, you know, they live poor, but everybody, everybody did that. Uh, Larry and Jim were raised on a farm. Farmers aren't known to be rich people. Uh, the poor people. Well, Jesus became poor so we could be rich, but not in money. And the world's idea of what riches are now, the world says, well, the more money, the more prestige you got, the better you are. What's going to happen to those dollars, that money, those pennies, those quarters? Right now, there's a shortage of coins. What's going to happen with all that when you die? What's going to happen to your money when, when you die? The government get it. Yes, that's true. And with a if you leave something to somebody else, the government's going to get part of it for inheritance. Well, are you going to take it with you? No. You know, you remember the story about the guy who's dying in the hospital? And he made his wife promise that I... They'd saved money for years and never went on vacation. He said, I want you to bury my money with me. She said, okay. She said, make me a promise. You'll bury my money. She said, I, I promise you, I will put your money in your casket. He died right before the casket closed. She put a check in there and they locked the casket. She, she kept her promise. She wrote him a check. Um, but riches. Now. You have to have money right now. If you go to the store, they like it when you give them money for things. Otherwise, it's called stealing. Um, they like it. He, he, or it's like Connor. When, Ryan, when Connor was little, he said, my dad doesn't need money. He's got a credit card. Um, <laughs> You've got to do something, but you got to pay for it. Well, this is not the riches to talk about here. We have riches. Jesus became poor. He could have stayed in heaven. Like I said, he came, he came a human being. Why? I mean... He had a lot better position in heaven. He had a lot better place there because this world is full of sin. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to the rest of this. That though he was rich, yet for our sake, he said for your sakes, Paul was talking about the Corinthians, to the Corinthians, he became poor, Why? That ye through his power might be rich. Listen to the preacher on the way to church this morning. I always listen to those guys and listen to the radio and I'm always doing it during the week and all that. But he made the statement God's power, he said, You are blessed. There's nothing that can happen to you. He said, There's nothing, if Jesus Christ is your Savior, there's nothing that can happen to you. Not one thing that Jesus can't conquer. Now think about that. We worry a lot. We fret over things. We don't want things to happen bad. I understand that. But my, I, boy, that hit me when he said, there's nothing. Yes, it seems bad at the time, but God says I can conquer it all. Amen. You know, this COVID thing, it's not pleasant. In 1919... There was a pandemic of the flu around the world. I read about it. 60 million people died. That's a lot of people. You know, my wife was sitting there last night. What are we going to do? How long are we going to wear this mask? What's going to happen? I said, it, could have, it was worse then. I said, they see, you can imagine how scared those people were. And they didn't have what we have. They didn't have the medical facilities. They didn't have all what we have. But 60 million people died. That's a lot of people. But look at the next thing here. Grace is God's riches and Christ at Christ's expense. It is because His grace, because of His grace, grace is unmerited, of course. God saw us in our need, and He was willing to pay the ultimate price of redemption. Now, you read the last couple weeks, these, these, there was five executions, federal executions were supposed to happen, and the courts kept blocking them and all that, and finally the Supreme Court said they'd go on. They were using COVID as an excuse and all this other stuff. People are going to die. What, what is the problem with COVID? Um, 
but the last I read the other day, three of them had been done. Life is important. Jesus died for those people too. His grace is sufficient. Look at this next slide. Because he was willing to become poor, we can enjoy the riches of his grace. He was willing to become poor. Leave what he had. You don't hear very often of somebody moving from a mansion to a cabin, to a little one-room shack. You don't hear that very often. I think it was two years ago, Randy went down to Bedford, somebody called him. He tries not to do any tree jobs out of the county because uh, you got to drive all, you know, people when they come to north of, north of Martinsville, you got to haul everything miles and miles, a lot of driving and all that, so he tries not to. But these people... Cut, ask him to come down and look at these trees in Bedford. And he went down there, and because it was summer, they had looked at this house in Bedford in the wintertime. So now all the trees were bare. Well, Randy went down there to come find out there was three ash trees that were dead. They didn't know that till summer. Those people had moved from Hawaii to Bedford, Indiana, and he was going to work in Louisville. Why are you saying, wow? Don't you think you'd work in Louisville, live in Bedford, and move to Hawaii? Isn't that the way you think it should be? To leave Hawaii and move to Bedford, Indiana and drive 90 miles to work. 70 miles from there. I don't know. People are weird. But they didn't know the trees were dead. Some people do things backwards. They must have had some money or whatever. He must have had an important job. I don't know. But Jesus became poor. He left his mansion. He left his throne so that he could come down and be among us who none of us have earned salvation. We haven't bought it. We can't do enough for it. But he leaves that thing, that place he has, but he was willing to leave, to come here, so that God, the, from, and God the Father sent him, and he, was, he became a man. I have down here, it's amazing, isn't it? We do a lot of things for, uh, admit it. We are selfish people. We do a lot of things for ourselves. I mean, we have to do some things. You get up in the morning, everybody else hopes that you comb your hair. You know, you look better when you comb your hair. Uh, everybody else wants you to... Fix yourself up a little better. Mackenzie was down there, we were here Friday, and there were some braces down there. She decided to put the bracelet in her hair as a pony to hold the hair back. She got that thing tangled in that hair. Karen sat there for 10 minutes and finally got it out of Kenzie's hair. And then Karen didn't help matters. I said, Kenzie, are you going to do that again? And she said, no. And Karen said, at least not today. <laughs> she probably won't. But she got that, somehow she twisted that in there. And there was hair in the bracelet. And Gates said, I was going to buy that bracelet. Karen said, take the hair. I don't know what happened. I don't know if they got it. I don't know if they bought it. I don't know. Um, Becky paid that jewelry was down there. Kenzie saw that first thing. She bought a couple of things. So he became a man that we might be the sons of God. Now, I said the world looks at money riches. Well, if you have more money, if you have a big house, if you have a big car... If you have prestige, you're okay. Guess what? Except for the guy a few years ago who had a Cadillac and he bought enough burial plots and he had himself buried in that Cadillac. He said he didn't want else to have it. He wanted to take his Cadillac with him. So be it. You're not taking car cars with you. You're not taking money. You're not taking anything. The only thing you can, the song says, the only thing you can take with you is another soul. When you win people to the Lord. But we didn't, he didn't come so we could get rich money-wise. We are the sons of God. Now, ladies, that includes all of us. That's a generic phrase. We are the sons of God. Now, you talk about riches. My name is all over trucks and milk jugs and all kinds of stuff. I have a bunch of boarding stuff at home. Down south and... More east and more west, they sell all kinds of board and stuff. But the only board and stuff you can find out here is Walmart sells board and cheese. And Menard sells the board and milk. 
And they are proud of it. It's a dollar more than it must be. I bought one gallon of chocolate milk for the kids, but they must be, Borden must be proud of it. It's a dollar more than everybody else's milk. That's a name that people recognize in certain parts of the country. Ice cream, Borden. Around here, Marsh, if you said Marsh, the girl that bought that house lives over an apartment behind, she said, you know where the Marsh is? I said, yeah. Well, that's been closed for how many years? It's not been Marsh for a long time. But she'd never been down here. She said, I don't even know where I'm at. i got to get the GPS. She said, I happened to be driving by and saw the yard sale. She said, i got to use the GPS to get back to my house. It's just right on 3rd Street. We're not very far from there. She had never been down here. She'd never been in this area. Who knows? But we are the sons of God. We have prestige. You can't get any higher. You don't have to have a name. You don't have to have money. And you don't have to have a, a big job. You don't have to say, I'm important. We're the sons of God. Jesus came so we could become the sons of God. Next, next, he emptied himself so that we could become filled. The preacher on the radio was talking about John being on the Isle of Patmos, and he said, I was, I was, I was in the Spirit. The Lord was talking to him, showing him, giving him the book of Revelation, showing him what was going on, telling him what was going on, uh, giving him pictures. He was seeing visions of things. I, I, I don't know what he saw. You can imagine if these flying things that talk about in the book of Revelation that had fire coming from them. I don't know. Could they be what we know now as airplanes? Let's say they are. What if it was you 2,000 years ago and you, didn't know, you had no idea what an airplane was? You never saw any modern conveniences and you get popped into the future. It would look strange. It would, it would be weird. You'd have no idea. You'd be, you'd be befuddled. But he's filled with the Spirit. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 8 says, But made himself of no reputation. He didn't build himself up. He took upon him a form of, of, of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. The Son of God seated on the throne of David next to God the Father. Here's God the Father. We talk about that. His throne is, is a half to half of the New Jerusalem is for God's throne. That's 1,500 miles. That's 750 miles. That's a pretty good sized throne. Here's God the Father. Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father, presiding over heaven, presiding over all this creation, and then he leaves to become a man. But we are so important, he died for us. He made himself of no reputation. But then he emptied himself. Look at the next slide. He chose to lay aside his glory and his power. Why? That he may take up himself in the form of a servant. You've all been servants. If you work for an employer, you're a servant. If you, a, if you have a boss, you're a servant to that boss. You're supposed to do what they want. Whatever the job is, whether it's at a restaurant, whether it's RCA, whether it's, whether it's you know, shining shoes, whether it's driving a truck, you name it. If you work for somebody, they're your boss, you're their servant. We've all been there. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that one. Uh, I'm sure she waits on you a lot, Dale. I know she does because I've been to your house too many times. <laughs> uh, but the Creator became the creation. And I put down here again, is, is that unbelievable? No. That's how much He loved us. You know, it's like a, a parent. We talk about this so many times. Most parents, grandparents, would be willing to give their life. If, if, if Dana... If something happened to broke and you had to give, would you be willing to give your life for your daughter? I know there are probably certain times you wouldn't, but <laughs> she was a teenager one time. Uh, but, you know, a parent, if it was their life or their child, those of you who don't have children yet, you won't understand it. That I guarantee you, the minute that child is born, he will change your mind. You will understand it. You know, we'll all understand it better by and by. Uh, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But you have a parent, and most of your parents will be willing to die for you. If they had to die for you... By the way, Connie, did your grandkids get back? They all made it back? I saw some pictures on Facebook, and they were down in... I guess you saw the one where they were a little too close to the alligator. 
Connie kept praying for them, then they got, they were closer than alligators than they should have been. Uh, and then they realized that, but at any rate, they, they, came, they came out of it okay. Um, but anyway, but, uh, anybody else, when you're teenagers, anybody else do anything stupid? Raise your hand if you ever do anything stupid when you're a teenager. The rest of you didn't raise your hand come up here after, after church because you, you're a liar. We all did something stupid. We all did stupid things. We all did silly things. But okay. That ye might be filled with the fullness of God. Do you know that I remember in our prison epistles class, Brother Howard, who, who just died a while back, professor, man, he spent a lot of time on that. The fullness of God. The fullness of God. I don't think we even begin to understand who we are, what we are, how we are, how full we are of God. I don't think we can really understand it. I'm serious. You say, yeah, I come to church, I read my Bible, I pray, I trust the Lord, He's my Savior. I understand all that. And I'm talking about myself too. I don't think we really understand the fullness of God. Of what we have and who we are and how we are. But he came to fill us. The next side says he completed us. He provided us with what we lack. And we lack a lot. That's why he became a man. That we might be filled with the fullness of God. Because without it we could never do it. If he hadn't come to be a man, we could never get this fullness. He could never be part of us. But he had this lineage. We have this human side of him. And then look at number three. He gave up his immunity to sin so that we could escape the penalty of sin. Immunity and penalty. Now, wouldn't it be nice to be immune from sin? No more temptation. One of these days we'll be there. We get to heaven, there won't be any sin. And there won't be any penalty for sin. Penalty. We don't like those things. You pay a penalty, you pay a monetary penalty for something being late. You do something wrong, you go to jail. That's a penalty. But if, if we really think about it, the sin that we have committed against God, we should pay the penalty. There should be this penalty that we should have to pay. If technically, if you think about it, yeah, we should have to pay it. But Jesus became immune to sin, so... He could pay the penalty for us. Hebrews 2, 7. Wherefore, all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Why? That he might be a merciful, that word mercy, and a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make, listen to this, reconciliation for the sins of his people. So that we could be reconciled to Him. The moment we committed our first sin as a baby, that separation was there of God. Matter of fact, it was before that because we have the we have that gene within us, that sin nature, passed on down from Adam. The moment we were conceived, we had that sin nature. God used sin seriously. And a price must be paid to atone for our sin. Only a human may pay because humanity has sinned. So in order for the human to pay, Jesus had to become a what? A human. He, you think it's God? God would have loved to pay our penalty? He would have. But what happened back in that garden? What did he tell Adam and Eve? That you can't partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in that day that thou partakest of the good the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt surely what? Die. Spiritually. That spiritual death. Because they sinned, God couldn't pay it. Only God is able to pay this debt because we are imperfect. Look at this next slide. Therefore, the only way that human sin be paid for is by God's becoming a human person and paying the price as a person. Now, this thing today, a lot of people do this thing, is called paying it forward. You might be in a restaurant, give the 
waitress money, say, those people at that table, the military people, the police officers, or, or whoever, uh, pay the bill. There are people who will pull up in line, they'll pull up at a, at a drive through at a restaurant, and they'll tell them, somebody, the, the people behind you paid for your food. Or you may do something for somebody, somebody else has done something for you, and you return do the same thing for them, and you don't have to be recognized for it, and nobody has to know. We call it paying forward. The, the, the debt, the money is paid for. And of all the drive throughs there's all this COVID, a lot of places you can't go and eat, but of all the drive throughs if you want one that's got it together, go to go out to Chick-fil-A. If you want to know an organization that's got it together, of course it's owned by Christians, so you want to own, you want, they got their act together. They got the best drive through procedure, anybody in this town. Top Joyce said, you know, she's been up there. How many of you ever been up to this chick drive to Chick fil A? You need to do it. Don't go right noon. They're busy. They're all the way out of the street. But but I, even if you are, you'll get through that drive through faster than any other drive through you've been through. And the food's good, too. Anyway, the debt has to be paid. The debt has to be paid. Jesus paid it all. All to MIO, the song says. John chapter 3, verse 5. And you know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. He can pay for it, he can manifest it, he can take care of it, because he has never sinned. We can't say that about any of us. Now, I know people, I've known two people who told me in my life they'd never sinned. They were serious. One of them was my boss. She was raised in Germany, and she they were she had a German background, a religious background, and she, in her eyes, everything she what they said was okay. She she said she had never sinned. Another one told me the same thing: I'd never sinned. Boy, that'd be great. That would be wonderful to never sin, never get angry, never lose your temper, never lie, never steal, never cheat. Never, never have a thought to choke somebody, you know, pull up front of you and honk your horn at them, you get angry. Ne never do any of that. Never to get mad at your brother or your sister. Gage the kids who were arguing, they were fighting, I don't know, something, over something stupid the other day. You know kids are. Did any, did any of you ever fight with your siblings? When you're awake? I said, guys, stop. I said, I don't even know what it was. It was something stupid. And you think that's bad? Kid, there's five dollars on Becky's dresser because they both have a, a wallet in Becky's dresser. I said, anybody know what the five ones are? Kenzie said they're mine. I said, where are they from? She said, Jacob dared me to eat something at supper the other night, and I ate it. He gave me five dollars. I said, what was it? She said, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, if somebody gave me five dollars for eating something. I don't remember what it was. I might take a bite of cottage cheese for five dollars. I don't know. It's about the only thing I won't eat. Used to not eat beets and cottage cheese. Now I love beets. I still can't eat cottage cheese. I eat cottage cheese and bacon lasagna, but I just can't take it. I just can't take cottage cheese. James Hobson said the only people he sees, he said, can't be good for you. The only people he sees eating cottage cheese are fat people. So. He takes Christ's righteousness and he places it on our account. If you have a credit card account, or if you have an account at the, at the hospital, or whatever, if you owe a mortgage, if you have a, if you have a bill, you have an account. And if you make a charge against that account, it adds to it. It adds to it. Well, what happens with that account? Whether it's a mortgage, car payment, credit card bill, whatever, what happens to that? You have to pay it, right? Or you're supposed to. Otherwise, you've got to file bankruptcy. But that account, that sin payment has been put on our account. That's the basis of our new relationship with Christ. Now, I want to emphasize this and got a couple more things. Do you realize, when I say it, I'm not even sure if we realize the fullness of God, do you realize that if it weren't for Jesus Christ coming as a man, that we couldn't even have the relationship with Jesus that we have? Have you ever thought about that? Because it would be a, there'd be a wall there. You ever talk to Somebody threw a wall. Anybody ever put a cup up on the... Don't raise your hand. Anybody ever live in an apartment, you put a cup up on the wall and listen to what the people are saying next door? I remember that one Lucy. Lucy and, and Ethel were somewhere, and she was, Lucy kept doing that. Of course, Lucy can get in trouble doing nothing, you know, but... 
we're interested in everything. We've got to know everything. But all of our sins are present and future have been paid for by Jesus Christ. And if they had not, that wall would be there and we could not communicate with them. It would be just like, this, this is a drop ceiling. For those of you who don't know, there's, about a, there's another ceiling. When we remodeled this 20 years ago, we dropped the ceiling down about that far up, I think, something like that. And then there's another ceiling, and then, of course, you've got the joists, and got, got all that insulation, all that stuff. If somebody was on the roof, don't get up on the roof, it's pretty steep. When they were doing this 20 years ago, I walked on it a couple times. I wouldn't even try it now. I'd probably be laying on the ground. I'd be the one to break my leg or my neck. Uh, but if somebody, if Jim was up on the roof doing something, he's not going to go up there because I'm going to let him. And if you try and talk to him, do you think he'd hear me? Through this ceiling and the next ceiling, this lace and the roof, do you think Jim would hear me? That's how it was with God. There was no, there was no openness. It was just blocked because of our sin. But our sin is no longer in God's record books. Instead, when God looks at us, when He looks at our account, He finds that in all actuality, that His the righteous of His Son wiped away that debt, took it away. When we paid off our mortgage. We got a piece of paper that said "paid in full." You pay off a car loan. You get a piece of paper that says "paid." If you have a credit card, you get a statement that says nothing to do. When you go to the store, you go to Kroger, and you pay for your stuff, they give you a receipt that's telling you it's paid for, it's yours, it's okay. You have a receipt to prove you paid for it. God made it be sin for us so that we would be made the very righteousness of God. Wh whose image are we made in? We are in the image of God. He wanted us to be righteous and holy. When you have your children, you, you look at that baby as firstborn, and you want that child to be the best kid that could ever be. You want your child to be one that everybody says, boy, that's a model child. They never cry, they never complain, they never fuss. You want your child to be the one that always does everything they're told. Did anybody ever have, did anybody have a kid like that? That everything you told them, they do. Something's wrong with Kenzie the last couple of weeks. Boy, you used to, she'd go in the bedroom and she'd make a mess. You tell her to go pick it up. I don't want to do that. I got to have some help. I don't know. I'm serious. <laughs> I watched them for the last three weeks. Now Jan's going to watch them the next couple weeks. The last two weeks, every time I told her to go in and clean her room up, she said, okay. And she went and picked it up. There's something wrong with my granddaughter. She said, there's something wrong with her. I don't know what the deal is. But she did, and everything last few weeks. I don't know if Sarah's been working with them. I don't care what you ask them. No, thank you. Yes, please. Got some manners all of a sudden. I guess they, well, I don't know if they got threatened or what, but Kinsey, pick your room up. Okay, no problem. Pick it up. I'm done. Have a hard time. So listen to this last thing. Not in our behavior, but in our, in our being, that part of us is going to go to heaven. That's the real me. Not our behavior. Yeah, that shows your background. But what you are. You know, they say, what are you when you're by yourself? We can always put on a front in front of everybody else. When a couple start dating, the boy and the girl, they, boy, they dress up all the time. Everything's perfect. Right? She wants to make sure she's dressed up for the date. He wants to make sure he looks okay. He does everything right. And he does everything good. And he opens the door for her. I still open the door for my wife. He opens the door for her. He does all that stuff. And then after they're married for five years, he lets the door slam in her face. He doesn't care, you know. And she does the same thing. I still open the door for my wife, let her go in. I go around and get her a car door sometimes. My wife used to sit, well, we got in fucking seats now. She used to sit next to me. Like the girl said, you used to sit next to me, now you don't anymore. He said, she, you're the one who moved over, not me. Uh, but that relationship with Jesus Christ. He became a man so that we could just sit in our 
quiet room, our prayer closet. Right here we can pray. You can talk to him. Don't close your eyes while you're driving down the street. Especially in this town right now. They've got construction everywhere. You can't go on Sarah Road this way. You can't go on Rogers Road. They're doing construction. They're doing construction downtown. They got East, they got West 2nd Street tore up out past Walmart. Did they got this town tore up? Jesus came so that we could talk to him. So that we could communicate. So we could be like him. We're creating his image. God didn't want us to be little brats. God wants to look at us and he wants to be proud of us. And he loved us so much he sent his son to die on a cross. Get his hands and his nails, nailed to, hands and his feet nailed to a cross. And he died. His blood was shed. And now, guess what? If you know him as your Savior, you get to go to 